Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Elden Ring and we're doing another weapon video and today's is the top five best war hammers. So these are the great big war hammers that uh, a lot of people are really going to love in this game. So again, we're always going to be ranking these. Oh, and also I'll show you where to find them, but we're going to be ranking them based on the damage they do, special effects, any sort of extra stuff that just makes them really, really good weapons. And so uh, we're going to be starting off with number five, the Rotten Battle Hammer. So you can see I'm holding it here. It's just a great big battle hammer. And uh, there are two variants of this in the game. There's the standard battle hammer which is also very the rotten one then the standard one is uh at least as good as far as stats on these go we have a max attack power of 801 and an average guarded damage negation of 41 this one has for attributes required 8 dexterity and 26 strength for a passive effect we have the scarlet rot buildup of 65 which is very nice especially against larger enemies and for our special attack we have braggart's roar so a uh, decent weapon actually real decent weapon probably my favorite like my personal favorite on this list uh, uh, but, you know, not quite as powerful as some of the other ones on this list. So that is the stats. As far as getting this one goes, it's in a late game location, but it's also easy to find in that late game location. So uh, you're going to need to make your way up to the Consecrated Snowfield through the Hidden Path to Halig Tree. And to do that, you need to take the Grand Lift of Rold, but you need to have the Secret Medallion. And there are two parts of it, and they are pretty easy to get. One of which you can get up here at uh, Castle Soul. So when you get to the end, you'll find it in a chest up on the ramparts. And then the other half, you'll find all the way down here in Liurnia at the village of the Albanorix. Uh, if you start from here, you just go up a small hill behind some sheds, uh, some shacks or whatever you want to call them. There will be a pot sitting there. If you hit it, it'll turn into a guy and he will give it to you after asking him, like trying to talk to him a couple times. So that is how you get both halves. Then you just bring it to the Grand Lift of Rold and you hoist Secret Medallion and that's how you get to the Hidden Path to the Halig Tree. And then once you're in here, you're going to want to head straight north until you reach the consecrated snowfield uh, site of grace. And then from there, you're going to want to go northwest until you get to this graveyard where I'm standing right now. And once you get here, you're going to have to kill the rotten duelist who is patrolling this graveyard. So you can see him right there. And he is the... Oh boy, he deals a lot of damage. I forgot about that. So he is the only enemy in this game that uh, distributes... I should uh, use my special attack. This, uh, this weapon. And so like I said, yes, the normal... Yikes. He obviously deals scar Scarlet Rot because he's, uh, you know, using the same weapon that you're trying to get here. But yeah, so he is the only way to get this weapon. You have to kill him, and he will drop it. On the bright side, I don't think it's a random drop. He seems to drop it uh, the first time you kill him. So once you've killed him, you'll have this weapon. Ha, <laughs> we killed him. I was considering just leaving the area, but I was like, nah, I'll kill him anyway, just for just for fun. So yeah, that is, uh, once you've killed him, you get this weapon. So, that being said, maybe I got lucky when I got it the first time, so if you don't, obviously you'll just have to keep grinding him as he does respawn at that spot. So that's how you get it. But as far as attacks go, again, we're going to be decently uh, standard for such a heavy weapon. That was our standard attack. Now we'll do a running jumping attack. And we'll do our standing strong attack. There's our charged one. But like a lot of weapons, our special ability is going to be coming from our uh, two-handed stance. And to use that, uh, you know, you use it like normal. And it uses the Braggart's Roar attack, which just raises our attack power, defense, and stamina recovery speed. So it just makes you a lot more effective in combat with the weapon. So, uh, pretty dang good weapon. Like I said, it's probably my personal favorite Warhammer in the game. Uh, the standard one is also very, very good, and of course you can affect either of these with Ashes of War upgrades, uh, but the Rotten one just has the advantage of dealing Scarlet Rot buildup. So that is number five. Let's move on to number four. All right, for our number four weapon, we have the Great Stars. So we just have a giant Morning Star type weapon, so a big old spiked mace club. Looks pretty cool, and it has a lot of really good stats. So as far as stats go, we have a max attack power of 832 and an average guarded damage negation of 39.8. This one for attributes required has dexterity of 12 and strength of 22. For passive effects, we have it that it causes blood loss buildup, so 55 points of that. And our special two-handed stance is the endure stance, so pretty useful. So stat-wise, not bad. This one can also be upgraded with Ashes of War, so you can customize it to do special attack damage or have a special move that you like, just, you know, get your Ashes of War implemented on it. As far as where to get this one, uh, it's found in the back of a moving cart up here. So if you remember my flail video, this is where I showed you the pumpkin head where you can get the chain link flail. Uh, but basically you're going to want to come to the Bridge of Iniquity, or I guess you could spawn over here uh, and come this way, but this is just the one that I like to go through. And then you just follow the road. Hey, 
And as you can see, you'll come up across a guarded troll wagon as you get up closer to here. And uh, basically, you just have to kill at least one of the trolls so you stop the wagon. And uh, probably take out some of, the, some of the guards just to make sure that they're not killing you while you're trying to get it. And then it'll be in the chest in the back of this wagon. So that is uh, the location and the method for how to get the great stars. And as far as combat, you can see it's uh, all decently standard stuff. We've got pretty strong hitting light attacks uh, for our running jumping strength attack. We can... Obviously, that guy was almost dead anyway, but you can pound a lot of energy. But, again, the cool thing about this is going to be our two-handed stance, which uh, is going to increase our poise. So, for a little bit after instigating that, you just take less damage from people that hit you. So, that's all the, uh, the two-handed stance does for this one. It's a decently useful skill, especially if you find yourself in combat against maybe larger enemies. We'll uh, increase our poise, and then we'll go in and we'll take out this pumpkin head. As you can see, it deals decent damage. <laughs> So that was a full strike from his uh, chain link flail, full power, and it did, it, you know, it didn't do nearly as much damage as it could. And also pretty dang easy to get. Like I said, you only have to kill one of the trolls, and that will stop the wagon, then you just hop up on the back, and you uh, get your weapon. So that is Great Stars, let's move on to number three. Alright, and so for number three at our middle spot, we have the Great Horn Hammer, which you can see has a, uh, I guess, pretty cool looking design to it. It actually kind of looks like a scythe, but it does operate as a hammer. It's just a big old crushing weapon. As far as stats on this one go, we have a max attack power of 850, so a decent st uh, step above the last one, an average guarded damage negation of 38.7, and for attributes required to use this one, dexterity of 10 and strength of 22. Unfortunately, no passive effect with this one, but we do have the Barbaric Roar two-handed stance. And this one can also be upgraded with Ashes of War, so you can customize it to do the type of damage or maybe the attack that you really like. So that's uh, it for stats. As far as getting this one goes, it is unfortunately a random loot drop. You get it from killing ancestral followers and uh, the best place to find them in a large concentration is here in the Siafra Valley. So we're in the Siafra River Valley. You can either find a whole bunch of the phantom versions of them down here in the Worshippers Woods region, uh, or you can find them up here in the Ancestral Woods version of the Night's Sacred Grounds. So basically, you're going to be looking for, you can see here we have one of the singing ones. They're not the ones you're looking for. Uh, it's going to be the ones that are actually wielding this weapon. Here we've got another Bone Axe guy, but we'll take him out just for a combat demo. So you can see this is a uh, decently effective weapon. So to take out an Ancestral Follower, three, three quick strikes, not too bad. Ah, see, there's one. There's an enemy that we're looking for. Of course, there's a whole bunch of them here. <laughs> but yeah, so basically you're just going to be looking for, I guess these ones with the glowing horns are the ones that carry the big hammers. So that should help them be easier to spot. Uh, but yeah, you just come down here to the Siafra River Valley and you uh, kill these guys until one of them will drop one for you. Hopefully without getting killed yourself. They're not that hard of an enemy to fight, I'm just not paying very close attention because I'm, you know, talking while I'm doing this. But, uh, as you can see, it's a decently powerful weapon. God, I hate getting shot by that. Uh, we took out all of those guys with just the light attacks. Here's our jumping heavy attack. And so, very, very powerful there. But, of course, it's the two-handed, uh, stance that is so effective. This one has the Barbaric Roar skill, which, uh, lets loose a bestial roar to rally the spirit and increase attack power. While active, strong attacks charge to savage combo attacks. So you'll, uh, you'll see here. There, we charged it. And now our strong attacks are gonna be, uh, even better. So you can see that when we did that, we charged it. It did a quick burst combo attack. Which uh, hits three times and deals just a ton of damage in rapid succession. So it is a decently effective uh, uh, two-handed stance that leads to that. So definitely a great weapon, one that I quite enjoy. It's unfortunate that it's a random drop, but there are enough enemies down here that wield it to make it so in a couple of runs you should be able to grab it. So that's number three, the Great Horn Hammer. Let's move on to number two. All right, and at number two, we have the Devourer's Scepter. And so this is a pretty cool looking weapon. Big old stick with a giant snake on it eating what appears to be the world. As far as stats on this one go, we have a max attack bar of 1051, an average guarded damage negation of 37.7. For attributes required, strength of 24, dexterity of 20, and faith of 25. No passive effects on this one, but a pretty cool special attack uh, with our two-handed stance called the Devourer of Worlds. So this one unfortunately cannot be upgraded with Ashes of War, so that's a weak point against it, but it is really powerful stock, and the Devourer of Worlds special attack is very, very useful. So that's it for stats. As far as getting this weapon goes, there are two places to get this weapon at different points in the game. The first one is going to be pretty early on. You can actually get it. It's right here in Limgrave. We're up here on Stormhill region and we're at the Warmaster Shack. And if you come here, you can find uh, Knight Burnhall 
and you can actually just straight up attack and kill him and you'll get his suit of armor as well as this weapon. So that is a, a pretty decent way to go, especially if you've already done the Volcano Manor storyline. But if you haven't and you want to get all the special weapons and armor and awesome upgrades that you can get through that, once you've killed Rikard after doing all of the letter missions, Knight Burnhall will actually leave Volcano Manor and you'll be able to find him over here in the uh, crumbling farm Azula. And so I'll show you where to find him here. Basically the closest place to uh, be to find him is going to be beside the Great Bridge. And so once you're at beside the uh, Great Bridge, you're going to go up these stairs, run up these stairs. And instead of going up towards the boss fight area, you're going to go turn left and go down here. It's going to be a beast man enemy here that I always like to take out before going down. Because you can get that nice sneak attack in while he's slumbering. And then you're going to want to go down this way. And you take this ladder or jump down. And uh, at the end of the hallway there, there will be three beast men. And you can either go down there, kill him, get what's in the chest. And then come back out here. Or just kind of walk back and forth on this pathway. And he should invade you. Now there are a couple requirements to this. Uh, I found that if I've killed Malekith... The Black Blade, so the boss up here, uh, I couldn't get him to spawn, so you're going to want to go after him before you go after get, to get Malekith. I've seen reports online that that is not always true. Sometimes people have killed Malekith and then he also spawned. But uh, one thing's for sure is you do have to, if you want him to invade here, you do have to complete his uh, quest line at the Volcano Manor. And one of those is going to require an area in Lindell that later on gets locked if you've completed the story. So you're going to want to do this, uh, the Volcano Manor quest line, before you finish the main storyline. Uh, but with that in mind, that is how you get this uh, this weapon, the Devourer Scepter. You can either get it right at the beginning of the game by just killing him here over on Stormhill at the Warmaster Shack right here, or after the Volcano Storyline mission, Volcano Manor Storyline, over here in Crumbling Azura. So that is how you get it. As far as combat on this bad boy goes, it's going to look pretty standard for your normal attacks. Very powerful heavy uh, quick attacks and we'll do a running jumping heavy attack on this guy as you can see deals quite a bit of damage it's something that's pretty useful against bosses or enemies that don't hit quite as fast so it's a magical attack charges up jams into the ground and it absorbs uh, hit points from enemies within that radius so it, as you saw it did a pre pretty decent sized radius. Unfortunately, didn't grab that, guys. But anyway, so basically it just absorbs hit points from enemies around you. So I find it to be decently useful. Like I said, it's probably most useful against boss enemies because you can then use it when they are in between their strike and it pulls hit points off of them and gives them to you. So it's got that nice healing effect and also still does damage to your enemies. So that's number two, the Devourer Scepter. Let's move on to the number one best Warhammer in this game. All right, and so for our number one best Warhammer weapon, we have the Cranial Vessel Candlestick. So you can see it's basically just a giant candlestick. Uh, pretty goofy looking design, but it's actually a really powerful weapon. So as far as stats on this one go, we have a max attack power of 1,072. So a decent step above the last and a lot above the first three. We have a average guarded damage negation of 42.7, so also pretty dang high. And uh, for attributes required to use this one, strength of 26, dexterity of 8, and faith of 22. No passive effects, but it does, does have the Surge of Faith special attack, which is pretty dang powerful. And unfortunately, you cannot upgrade this one using Ashes of War. So uh, that is not an option. But again, it does have really high attack power and a pretty powerful uh, special attack. So that is it for stats. As far as getting this one, it can be a little bit difficult. You have to make your way up to the Giant Conquering Hero's Grave up here in the mountaintops of the Giants region. Basically, you just have to traverse around several paths until you get up there. And then you'll be able to come down and around and come down through here until you find this building. There'll be someone to kill out front. And once you did, you can get inside and I'll just show you the path real quick of how to get to where this weapon can be found. And so once you've fought your way up past all those annoying enemies, and you'll get up into this room up here, at the end there will be this corpse, and on this corpse you will find this candlestick like thing. So that is how and where you find this weapon. All right, and as far as using this weapon goes, uh, again, you're going to see pretty decent, real slow, powerful attacks as far as your uh, heavy and light attacks go. The only major thing that you'll notice with them is that uh, it deals a significant amount of flame damage. So if you're fighting an enemy susceptible to flame, it will do a lot more damage than a lot of other weapons on this list. Again, the special power is going to come from the two-handed stance, which is called the uh, Surge of Faith. And so this one says, set the flames of Burok's Faith ablaze 
bodies in the cranial vessel. Then raise it aloft and rain down fireballs in all directions. Repeated inputs will continue to raise the armament aloft, continuing the attack. So basically it's this big old area of effect attack. So I'll just show you it here. It takes a little while to institute, but uh, once you do, you can just keep firing down lots and lots of fireballs all around you. And uh, once you've initiated it, you can just keep pressing uh, your input button for your special attack like that and it will continue to raise down, uh, rain down fireballs. So a significantly more powerful than atta uh, special attack than a lot of Warhammer type weapons. And the fireballs deal significant damage. So yeah, that is the Cranial Vessel Candlestick, well worth finding. Definitely a very, very good weapon, especially if you learn how to use it effectively. Uh, but that is all five of the top five best Warhammers in the game, so I hope you enjoyed this video, but we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.